I just want y'all to know like the internal struggle that I'm dealing with right now where if I make a video talking everyone's like you're so silly like you're so funny ha ha and then if I make a thirst trap like for my job <laughs> 200 likes maybe like one comment okay okay so you think I'm a fucking comedian but you don't think I'm desirable can you please Welcome to the wall. Most women today are ending up single. We will see the video of a woman who was voted by Chad. We will also see different situations of the modern woman. And an independent woman among tears does not talk about how she wants to be more feminine and gentle. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you like what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. We would also love to hear your experiences in the comments. Your participation helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. Anybody figured out how to make yourself more feminine and soft? And I don't mean in the way you dress, because I feel like I dress pretty girly and feminine. I mean in your energy. Because I think that's what's ruining a lot of my relationships and friendships, is that like I have such an independent, harsh kind of energy. Um... And people like it. I'm not saying they don't, but I just, I don't ever ask for anything in friendships or relationships. And I can do everything all by me, but deep down I want people to be there for me. And I want people to show up for me, but I never ask them to. But then I get upset because they don't. But again, I don't ever ask them to. And I give off this energy like I can do it all by myself. And I just don't know how to fix that. I just don't know how to fix that. All I've ever known is um, how to be strong and how to survive and how to be independent. But now that I'm grown and I have survived, I wish that I didn't have to be this anymore. And I don't know how to make myself more soft. And I don't know how to be in a friendship that's not where I'm low maintenance but then I get sad because I want more than low maintenance I don't know how to fix this about myself and isn't it that being strong and independent is what you want to be nowadays girl what you need in your life is a masculine man Yes, a man who makes you take on your role as a woman. Because having that dominant energy only saddens you because you're ending up alone. It's that today's women are sold on being the corporate girl. But do they really want that? Most don't. Many follow this path because they have to support themselves, but then when a man comes to woo them, they can't let go of. Their boss girl facade in the office. I would recommend you work on yourself. Dress more femininely. Speak in a lower tone. Be more helpful. You can watch videos of trad wives but also see the culture of women in the Pacific or Eastern Europe. And gradually you'll learn to connect with your feminine energy. Especially in how to relate to men, it's that these women in order to connect with their feminine side, they need a strong man by their side, who sets boundaries, tells them I've got this, that she feels she can count on him. That's why I always tell them the importance of the man being masculine focusing on himself, because women like this need to fit into a man's framework, who knows how to set boundaries for them. Can we all just make a pact to have my back? And if I ever so much as utter the words, oh, but you know, we've got a really good emotional connection. He's been through tough things like me, so we've just bonded over it. I just think, you know, he really gets me. And even though he's not ready for a relationship, I love spending time with him. If them words come out my mouth, punch me in my fucking face and cable tie me to a church because I need fucking Jesus. One double standard that I will always <laughs> appreciate <laughs> is that men can never make fun of women the same way that women can make fun of men. This filter specifically being what I'm talking about. Men, you... We can make endless jokes about you. You cannot do the same. What are you gonna do? Call me ugly? Ooh, that really hurt. What are you gonna do? Say that you don't want to date me? Mmm, 
crying. I look like a guy who takes pictures like this. Some have noticed that not all women know how to be funny. Most don't even know how to tell a joke. It's that this girl more than looking like a man with that ring in her nose, she looks like a cow. I would recommend her to leave the comedian's side behind. <laughs> Regarding the other girl who wants to make a pact, I'm telling you right now she's going to break it. This is the one who likes Chad. If she's always going back to Chad's hands, man doesn't bring anything to the table other than his seed. This man surely manipulates her. She always goes back to him. As she says, I love spending time with him. Moreover, when you see a woman who's always talking about her singleness, who claims she doesn't want a man, who now says she'll leave all that behind, she's screaming that she wants a boyfriend to the high heavens, she's seeking attention. To see if someone will comfort or woo her, but it seems not even Jesus can send her a man who can support her. Okay, first and foremost, I recognize this is intended as a compliment, so I appreciate the compliment. But just as an aside, um, I believe that the, or at least in my personal experience, the mythos, the rumor that being a conventionally attractive woman in the United States will get you free drinks at a bar is on the same scale of mythology as the D.A.R.E. program convincing us as kids that people were just going to offer us free drugs wherever we went. And maybe for some women this happens all the time. Never happened to me. Never happened to me. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I wouldn't even know how to act if someone tried to buy me a drink at a bar at this point. Like, I would probably just get into my little witch voice. Just as the legends foretold, and my mother's mother once said this would happen. Have you ever heard of the privilege of the pretty girl? It really exists, and we see it more in bars and nightclubs, where women only go with their looks. They don't even have money for a single drink. They often leave drunk from there. That's why less attractive women hate beautiful women for the amount of attention they receive, because attention, especially from men, is addictive for women. But whose fault is this? It's the fault of the simps. These men start buying them free drinks, only to later see them leaving hand in hand with Chad, a man who, if she's interested, will have fun tonight. If this doesn't happen to this girl and others, it's because thankfully, I want to think. Men are waking up. They're not giving away their attention and resources. Remember. Your attention is your superpower as a woman. Don't give it away to just anyone. Stop giving privileges just because she has a pretty face that has an expiration date. Only give your attention to the woman you feel deserves it. Being single is only shit if you think it's shit. Hear me out. Angel, you're not behind. I'm 29. I've just moved back in with my parents. I've just come out of a two-year relationship to someone that I thought I was going to get married and have kids with. Circumstances meant that I had to move out of the apartment pretty quick. And I was in love with my apartment and I was in love with where I was living. I was living like a street back from the beach. This was something that I'd manifested. This is something that I'd wanted for so long. And now I'm in suburbia, nowhere near a beach. Nowhere near my friends. I'm driving like an hour and a half every day, every couple of days to go and see them and just like try and keep some normality in my life. Everything has just suddenly changed. My ex and I were supposed to travel Europe this year. We had plans to travel. We had plans, our, our word for the year, you know, <laughs> New Year's. We, we broke up shortly after New Year's. Our word for the year was fun. <laughs> I was meant to be having fun this year, guys. And let me tell you, I will still be having fun, just not with him past three months have been a roller coaster. I've been up, I've been down, I've been sky high, I've been in the dirt. I have no idea what's next. I honestly thought I would be married with kids right now and it hasn't happened that way, it hasn't worked out that way. But I do believe in divine timing and I do believe that everything happens for a reason and I do believe there isn't a right or wrong way to do this life. I've been blessed in other ways in my life and I know that everyone's blessings come in in different orders. I mean, some people meet their person in high school and they're with them for the rest of their life and that's amazing. But some people, they don't meet their person until they're like 70. And I do believe that every person that comes into our life serves a purpose. It's not for nothing. We're meant to learn, we're meant to grow, we're meant to have those good times, even if it's far <laughs> and few between. It's all leading us to where we're supposed to be. I know it's harder said than done, but please don't compare yourself with others, other people's stories and timelines. That, that's honestly, it's like so silly the more that I think about me trying to compare my timeline to someone else's because I'm not someone else, I'm me. I think the only reason that we stress out when it comes to like finding our person, finding love, settling down, getting married, having kids. Here I want to highlight something that I always tell them so they can see how it works. This woman lived near the beach, had a great apartment, in short, 
she lived under the comfort or umbrella of a man who was financially stable, a high-value man. This man invited her into his frame. She was happy trying to belong to his lifestyle. He dumped her, and she had to go back to her parents' place. This guy is surely a Chad. He enjoyed her when she was younger, sent her home at 29, entering the wall, because the wall doesn't forgive. Now he'll surely look for someone younger than her. All a classic textbook chat. Now look at how she recounts her beautiful past life that she thought she would marry into, her old apartment, her trip to Europe, her beach house, all financed by that man. Brothers, focus on yourselves, work on your quality of life, because that's what yields the best results. But let's continue with her story. I think the only reason that we stress out when it comes to like finding our person, finding love, settling down, getting married, having kids is all because of the social timeline that's like thrust upon us. Like we're told from a young age that this is like the ideal age that you should be getting married and having kids. And we're made to believe that when we reach a certain age, we are considered old and no longer wanted. And then we've got the biological clock for women. Obviously, we do feel like that we have this pressure and this like time is running out. But the fact is, firstly, <laughs> you don't need to be in a relationship with a man to have a kid. So if you're desperate to do that, you could do it by yourself. Secondly, you could adopt. Thirdly, you don't actually need to have kids. I, I know I don't. Ugh, this is going to be a touchy subject, but there are many women out there that are very happy without kids. You don't need to have kids just because you're a woman and you can have kids. I mean, society puts all this pressure on us that we have to have kids or, you know, we're not truly successful in life until we have kids. I personally want kids, but all these pressures and problems that we put on ourselves and we let society put on us, there's actually an answer for it all. It's not as end of the world tragic <laughs> as we are made to believe. I think this subject, this topic is such a problem nowadays because we as women feel like we are running out of time and we feel pressured to, you know, find someone. And sometimes this can lead to us lowering our standards in men. And we end up settling with people that we're not happy with. We end up settling in relationships that are abusive. I'm saying all this because my younger self needed to hear it. I think I've wasted too much time putting so much focus on finding a partner in my life where I wish I'd earlier put that focus on finding me. Right now, I'm giving you permission to take the pressure off yourself, to relax a bit, to enjoy life, to focus on yourself. Put the focus on you. You're not behind. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And if I am talking to someone who's single right now, it is so exciting to be single. I know everyone puts out these videos about like, oh my God, you know, horrible date story. I have to date again. This is like, I just don't want to do this. I, for one, am super excited. The fact that I don't know what's around the corner. I don't know who I'm going to meet in the future. I don't know how many dates I'm going to go on, how many good ones, how many bad ones. It's exciting. I'm excited to have that first kiss again, to have those butterflies again, to introduce them to my family again. Like there's so many firsts to be had, like travel with them, get married, all these, you know what I mean? Breaking up with someone, being single is only a negative thing if you see it that way. What about the freedom? What about the fun, the excitement of not knowing what's next? Anyway, I just want to let you know, if you do feel like you're behind, you're not. I love you. I'm also single, have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, have no idea what's next, but I'm excited and I'm happy to be here. Amazing and I love you. This woman has all the signs of becoming an alpha widow. <laughs> now she comes with the discourse that there is time. Don't feel pressured. But what you should have done was to hold on to that man because he seemed to be well positioned. It's very likely that what comes next will be worse or that you'll spend many years single and worse yet, hit the wall because the wall doesn't forgive. See how she's focused on her biological clock. They all say the same thing, that it doesn't matter, that there's plenty of time to get married, that not everyone wants to have children, that they can even do that alone. But you envisioned yourself having children. You thought you would get married. Something doesn't add up in your speech. Now you have to go back to the carousel to try dating again, to increase the body count, and to top it off, to see if you don't end up pregnant by a Chad. Brothers, the wall doesn't forgive. When you're a man who did the work, you choose. To this woman, all I can say is, welcome to the wall. The carousel isn't like kissing for the first time again. As she says she doesn't know what she's doing, well, I'll tell you what you should have done, and that was to hold on to that man. You screwed up, so we're off to a bad start. 
This woman, Kimberly Alexander, is claiming that Tristan Thompson is the father of her five-year-old child. Tristan already took a DNA test and it came back negative and conclusive. So is she entitled to a second test? I was actually quoted in this article and my answer is no. I'll put the link in the comments. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we want to show you how this country is supporting irresponsible women by preventing the approval of a law that would mandate mandatory DNA testing. We'll delve into stories and data of true impact that society doesn't tell you about paternity fraud. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you like what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. And let's make America great again. Hey, listen, if you told me at 5 a.m. this morning that when I woke up to get my blood work, that I would get a live showing of the Maury show, I wouldn't believe you. I also wouldn't think my insurance would cover it. This morning at like 5.30, I went to get like routine blood work done, you know, before work. And while I was waiting in the lobby, there was a couple and their baby sitting next to me. Super early in the morning, I'm like falling asleep in my chair. When I hear the couple next to me, the man go, you know, we wouldn't be here if you didn't sleep with my best friend. When I tell you the strength of my methicinators from growing three times in size rose me out of my sleep and I was like, I'm sorry, what the fuck did you just say? And he's sitting next to him and was like, shh, keep it down. And I'm like, bitch, do not keep it down. I turned into the black eyed peas and like, pump it louder. Man responds even louder. He's like, what? Are you ashamed because you're a two timing bitch? And I don't even know if this child is mine. Gears in my head are turning and I'm like, oh my God, this woman cheated on this man with his best friend and now they don't know if that baby is his. I'm looking at the baby like, um, sir, I don't think you need a paternity test. How do I say this? You are not the father. Responds him. I don't want to use her real name, but she's like, Javier, how many times do I have to tell you? Baby Andrew is your baby. Just look at him. She told him to look at that baby. It reminds me of like that video where there's like a bunch of cats and like a dog is trying to infiltrate a little cat group and is dressed like a cat. Javier is the cat and you look at baby Andrew. <laughs> This is what he looks like. Actually, I got called in for my blood work, but honestly, I would have loved, I would love to be a fly on that wall. Bro, justice for Javier. Actually, fuck that. Justice for baby Andrew. He don't know who his father is. Nearly 30% of DNA tests come back negative in this country, with such a high rate of men being falsely accused of fatherhood. Why wouldn't you consider DNA testing? DNA testing should be mandatory immediately after the child is born. But as you know, the government has never supported men because they know that with this female sexual liberation, thousands of women would have to face the consequences of their actions. But do you think women will allow such a law to be passed? Of course not. They would never allow it over their dead bodies. Taking responsibility for the modern woman is like kryptonite. But what angers me the most about this is the role of the state. If a woman wants child support from a man, all she has to do is accuse him. Without asking, they will go after this man take his money. But even if you ask for a DNA test, the judge will prolong the process so you can't do it. And worse yet, the woman won't want you near the child. She will make sure a judge doesn't allow you to see the child so you won't be able to take the test. But worse still, in states like Texas, even if the child is declared not yours, you still have to keep paying child support. You continue to pay for the sins of another man, the Chad. This woman better pay for what she did. Javier, we stand with you. They married his high school sweetheart at 19. Family man. Had three children. Two boys and a girl. But after 10 years, his wife told him that she no longer felt like she was in love and she wanted a divorce. It took CJ a little while to bounce back, but when he did, he joined the military. He wanted to get away. He wanted to travel. He wanted to start a new life. When his ex-wife found out that he joined the military, she wanted a child support increase. The military said they was cool with it, but they had to test all of the children before they did it. So they had a DNA test on all three of the kids, and they showed up in court for the results. And the judge read the following. When it comes to your oldest son, Junior, you are not the father. When it comes to your middle son, you are not the father. And when it comes to baby girl, you are not the father. CJ cried so hard in the courtroom that he passed out. This woman stood in court with a straight face. It said, well, he's the dummy 
for believing that they were his kids. The modern woman, mostly single mothers, mostly uses this horrible phrase, the father is the one who raises, not the one who begets. How terrible it is to make a simp raise another man's child using this as blackmail. The father is the one who begets, that is his seed, that is what you should be taking care of. Stop taking care of Chad's children, always get DNA tests for your children. This man imagines the pain, how despicable this woman is. Three children, ten years of marriage, not a single child could she have from this man. She had to have three children with someone else. That's why I always tell him to get his DNA test. Look at how little remorse this woman had. He's the fool for believing they were his children. How narcissistic can someone be to have so little regard for another person's feelings? If a woman denies you a DNA test, then tell her to go to hell. You can always replace a wife, but never a child. Once that child is born, you put your name on it. By the state that child is yours. It's hell trying to remove your name because she and the state won't let you do it because it's not convenient for them. It's convenient for you to keep maintaining another man's sin like a slave without protesting. I kept hearing this over and over again that there was like 30% of fathers who found out that they were not actually the biological father of their child. Now when I jumped into this and I did quite a bit of digging, I found that that particular statistic is coming from sources that do DNA testing when it's actually in question. Now there was this really, really intricate study done using all the different genealogy sites and they were using genetic markers that could only be passed down if both parents carried the gene. And I think spina bifida was one of them. There were a couple, but it made tracing lineage much more accurate in the broader population and not just from the companies where people are going in there because there's already a suspicion that he's not the father. And what they found in this big, long, in-depth study was that in the U.S., it is about 3% of men raising children that are not biologically theirs. Now, before all the women just start seal clapping all over the place, let me give you some other numbers. Now, we're going to start with 3% of fathers are raising children that are not biologically theirs. Now you take that number and you go to how many fathers are there in the United States? Want to guess? 70 million. And we're using rough math here, but that gives us a number of fathers not raising their biological children at 2,590,000. Over two and a half million. If you weigh that against the 6.69 million single father households, that means that there is a fair shake of these guys that are raising children not biologically theirs as single dads. Obviously not all of them, but the likelihood is that there's a percentage in there. Those numbers are coming out of the U.S. based off of a collection of all of the different genealogy sites. So although it's not 30% of all fathers across the entire United States, it is still over two and a half million. And that's an awfully big number for women to always just want to point the finger at the men. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking DNA don't lie. The damn DNA never lies. Did you all hear, brothers? Two and a half million men. That's almost all the men from some entire states in the country raising Chad's children because women couldn't stay faithful to their commitment. And you, knowing that, why don't you get it done? When we know that for women, Taking responsibility is like kryptonite. Look at how happy women are knowing that. But today it might be another man, but tomorrow it could be your son. That's why I always tell the woman before your first baby that a non-negotiable for you is the DNA test. If that woman denies you the right to know who the real father is, then you know the child isn't yours. Don't let yourself be blackmailed by her words, saying things like, how could you believe I would do such a thing? Remember, they told all those men the same thing, and the tests came back negative. Don't think, mine is different, because they thought the same thing too. When you know that two and a half million men were deceived, what makes you think you can't be a victim of this injustice? Brothers, watch the next video to see how the state, to which you pay taxes, is playing against you.
Meet Carnell Smith. Carnell Smith was a father out of Atlanta, Georgia, who when his child turned 11, this beautiful girl that he had raised, his pastor told him he needed to get a paternity test. He went and had not one, but two paternity tests that said he was never the father to begin with. Obviously, he took this to the courts and said, not only is it my, not my child, I shouldn't have to pay child support, I should get that money back. The judge told him he should have found out sooner, ordered him to continue paying child support, and now he's not even allowed to see the kids. Well, that didn't sit right with Carnell. This man took it all the way up to the Supreme Court and went to 11 different states to protect guys like you from this when it happens. It's called paternity fraud. A real life hero that everybody should know his name if you ask me in my book. That's my buddy. This man deserves a beer because he's fighting for every man who goes through this situation. What he's been through. This man is a hero to me. How long must a judge sink to continue supporting the agenda of empowering women? He had to go to the Supreme Court in 11 states to prove his abuse because even with evidence in hand, a man in this country still has to fight to prove his innocence. This should be punishable by law because, brothers, a man can get married one to four times, lose everything in the marriages, end up alone in his old age, spend thousands of dollars on child support and alimony, and still stay strong. But your children, that's a line a woman should never cross because no matter how strong you want to be, this destroys a man mentally. One doesn't mind working like a slave just to ensure his children are well. Because every man of value takes care of his seed, he doesn't mind sacrificing his life to give his children a great life. But for a woman to tell you that all your work, effort, and love were for another man's child, and even with proof, the state wants to force you to support Chad's children, and that woman just tells you not to do it again and you can go home. This system is cruel to men. 30%. That's 30% of all men who go to actually get paternity tested turn out to not be the father. So out of every 100, 30 of those will not be the dad. So it does leave me to wonder why when a baby is born, why don't they just DNA test at that time? Understanding the fact that sometimes the dad's not involved, but that seems like it would clear up a whole bunch of issues. What's your thought? Should they require DNA testing at birth? Because it's not in the state's best interest, they know that if they do this, there will be millions of men facing paternity fraud. I bet that more than those two and a half million men would come to light. If the marriage rate is already low, this would make it even worse because they know that causing women to throw tantrums with their feminist marches against this law would be numerous. They know that this would decrease child support payments, from which the state collects billions. They know all of this very well, but what's worse is that men never unite to fight for their rights. I must acknowledge this about women. They organize massive movements, take to the streets to demand absurd laws that always intend to screw over men, but men never do something like that. We stay silent, enduring, when we could make the economy stand still just by protesting. Brothers, this video is for more men to wake up. That's why I'm sending this message with a bit of humor but with a true message because every day there is more abuse. Modern women are ruining the lives of good men, men who just wanted a healthy marriage, women who take away their assets, women who prohibit them from seeing their children, women who deceive them but still win in court, women who are giving Chad's children to good men. We have to wake up men because the government won't do anything for us. They will continue doing what's best for lining their pockets, leaving women without any legal consequences. Nowadays, DNA tests should be mandatory. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll be discussing the pitfalls of dating in your 40s and how it can be frustrating for women. We'll also delve into a video where a woman exploits the death of her ex-boyfriend to portray herself as the suffering victim. Before we dive in, we want to express our gratitude for your presence here. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoy what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being a part of our project. Let's get started. 
if you're over 40 and single. So one of the biggest struggles that I've heard from men who are over 40 and dating is this. You are jaded, so you're still hurt from your divorce, you're still hurt from your breakup, or maybe you're burnt out from those dating apps. You feel like women are puzzles, we don't have the energy anymore to try to solve them. I get it. After failed relationships, failed dates, paying for failed dinners, you're just burnt out. You're feeling more hopeless than ever. You're asking yourself, what would it take to finally meet a good woman? What would it take to finally meet my soulmate? I'm going to tell you bluntly, as both a registered psychotherapist and a relationship coach, the number one mistake that men make is they bring this heaviness and this resentment on a date. So I see this cycle time and time and time again, and it just leads to even more ghosting or even more failed dating. This cycle isn't going to end if you don't learn how to break it. You need to start by learning what is holding you back from feeling excited, candid, and present in finding love. A piece of advice to all men is to stop listening to advice from women with ridiculous titles they make up themselves. The first thing I recommend to a man, especially after turning 30, is to get his life in order. First, take time to tidy up your garden before bringing in the flowers. Although this may seem like it will take a long time, the truth is it won't. A year of giving it your all with discipline really takes you far. First, get your financial life in order. Work on your body to reach a healthy weight not necessarily being muscular, although it helps take care of your face and teeth, improve your home, clean and comfortable home equals a healthy mind. A strong body boosts your self-esteem. Start improving your clothing. This can even help with women at the store because it's good to listen to advice from the opposite sex in this regard. After working on yourself, I recommend every man to have a photo shoot for two reasons, to always see your progress from your discipline and to use for your dating app profiles. Believe me, this works very well. Many men are actually handsome to about 60% of women, but they just never have a good photo shoot. Now, with women, for coffee dates, don't spend too much money. Someone hasn't earned it. And finally, never tell a woman your life story on the first day. Always keep some mystery. If you do these things, you'll not only see results in your dating life, but also a radical change in your life overall. You are not the only one that hates online dating, but the truth is I think there are some real reasons why it might be hard to get out into the world and meet people. Number one is that you don't know where to go, <laughs> especially if you are over the age of 40 and you don't have the infrastructure of your social life like you did in college or when you were younger. It's hard to even know where to go and that's why I like creating dating plans like business plans so that it forces you to get out into the world and be intentional when you're meeting people. Number two, you might be stuck in your head. You are sitting there thinking about all the reasons why you're not saying something to someone. You're hesitating before. You don't know how to start a conversation. Maybe even your social muscles a little atrophied. All of those reasons could be keeping you in your little cocoon. And the third reason is that there's fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of uncertainty, fear of getting into another toxic relationship. You got to get out of your head and get into life and be intentional to start meeting people. And if you want to learn how, come to my new workshop series called Stop Hating Dating. Click the link below. Here's another dating coach who sells you on how to have a partner without having one herself. The modern woman struggles with dating because men who seek them out on dating apps only want to take them to bed. Usually, these are men who have gone through divorce or a long-term relationship and don't want anything to do with another long-term commitment. Second, men have understood more about how dating works. They don't give themselves away. But something interesting I can take from here is having a strategy for dating. Once I met a man who was really successful with dating. He wasn't this high-value type with great physical appearance, but he knew how to sell a great experience. He would meet women at a cafe with a European style to have coffee, dressed casually but elegantly. After a good chat, he would take them to an amusement park to ride various attractions, to increase their adrenaline and make them feel like they were having fun like when they were young. Then they would go for a walk on a boardwalk near the beach. The truth is, almost all of them ended up in his bed that day or days later because he sold them a super fun date. Doing this, in my opinion, is a great idea. It doesn't cost much but you're selling a great experience because it makes you look like an interesting man with a great life, and you're selling the woman a great experience, which is what they love the most. This is a picture of me and my ex-boyfriend. I make a lot of videos about being almost 40 and single, but I have had relationships before, and this is Nathan, my ex. The reason that I'm making this video is because 
about three weeks ago, I woke up to a text message from Nathan's friend, who's also an ex from before me, uh, telling me that he had been given days to live. Now, if you are someone who watches my videos regularly, you'll know that my mum died when I was a kid, my sister died when I was 28, and this man, although our relationship didn't work out, we still remained in contact, we still remained relatively close, and I did not know. I knew that he had leukemia, but I didn't know how bad things were. So when I received the message to say that Nathan um, had been given days to live and was receiving end of life care, I went to the hospital where he was and I went every single day except one day until he passed. And I was at the hospital with him and his family when he did leave and go. I don't want to say die because I just don't really like that word. So <laughs> as you can imagine, the last three weeks have been a complete whirlwind because I was just living my life, everything was going normally. And then suddenly I get this message and I just knew that I needed to be with him because A, I know that he would have done it for me at the drop of a hat. He would have been there for me regardless. And also because there's a lot of stuff that's been left unsaid and undone between us and can never be said now. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was there for him. And also just because I love him, even though I fell out of romantic love with him, the amount of love that I have for this man is huge. And one of the reasons that this guy was so important to me and my life and something about him that changed me and my life forever. This woman seems to suffer from emotional attachment, perhaps due to the tragedies in her life. Remember that women always use stories about their ex-husbands or boyfriends to boost their channels. At least she changed the message from being married to the devil, claiming she was lucky to leave that relationship, the usual story. But notice that she will talk about her ex-boyfriend and their relationship. But if I heard correctly, the guy who warned her was a friend of her boyfriend, and he had a relationship with her before the boyfriend who died. It seems she dated her boyfriend's friends. In other words, she gives love to everyone. This doesn't happen among men because among firefighters, we don't step on each other's hose, but women have no sense of loyalty. She presented herself according to her story, claiming she was with the man all the time before he died, but she surely ruined a friendship by getting involved with two men who were friends. That, to me, tarnished your entire message of compassion. But let's continue. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Was the fact that during our relationship, whenever I would get upset about the fact that my mum and my sister are no longer here, which has happened a lot um, in my lifetime, as you can imagine, and when you're living with somebody and you're with someone, that's obviously going to happen. He was the person that would just hold me. He would never ask me what was wrong. He would never expect me to be different. He didn't need to make it better. He was just there for me. And that's the first time in my life that a man that I've been in a relationship with has ever done that for me. And it honestly helped me heal from some of the trauma that I've experienced. So now I am in a really strange space where I am feeling a little bit lost, if I'm honest, when it comes to content creation, when it comes to what I'm supposed to do next, all of that stuff, because as I said, I wasn't expecting this um, and life was just ticking along and then suddenly this has happened. But it's one of those things where now I'm in a, a kind of state of, I guess, like grief in a way, but life is so busy that I have to keep going at the moment. Um, his funeral hasn't happened yet, so there's still that to go. I'm really close with, with his family and I love them very much and I'm super grateful that they allowed me to be there for him. But yeah, it just makes everything else in life seem just small and not really that important. And I'm just trying to find the purpose, I guess, to um, start creating again and start making content again. Um, and just to deal with the fact that this person, who by the way, was 30 years old when he died, is no longer here. So I just wanted to make this video because I'm always honest and authentic with you guys about what's going on in my life. And this is where my head, my heart, and I guess my soul has been for the last three weeks. I'm trying to live life and, you know, I've had my brother's wedding since Nathan passed. I've had um, some great concerts to go to. But honestly, I just feel like I want to shut myself in a room for a bit and um, just process what has happened. But yeah, I just wanted to let you all know. And I also wanted to point out that when it comes to grief, and like I said, I've been here before, um, that 
sometimes the hardest, most horrible things that happen to us in life, and this doesn't bring someone back or, you know, negate the fact that they're no longer here, can end up being the most inspirational thing or the most positive thing if we choose to allow it to be the um, spark that makes us change our lives. And I know that this guy was super supportive of what I was trying to do and that I really feel like I need to take risks and leaps because life is not promised and life is really fucking short. And you know what, folks? Sometimes you love someone, it's the right person, it's the wrong time. And I am so grateful that I got to love and be loved by this person. She feels bad because she can't make content. Knowing she's a modern single woman, you already know what content she's referring to. Now, I wonder, what's the need to seek attention using someone else's misfortune? Firstly, he's a friend of another ex-boyfriend. Secondly, she wasn't in a relationship with him. She left him. And yes, she may have loved him and all that, but not as the love of a man in my life. More like the love of a best friend, a shoulder to cry on. I won't hammer on about this man's life. May God rest his soul. But if he didn't call you when he was going through that, it's very low to use someone's life who passed away, who didn't ask for you to be there, to create content, to portray it as if it happened to you. Did you hear that right? He hugged me, supported me, this man gave me love, helped me heal several traumas. But still, you left him. So something was lacking. Content creators, honestly, there's something else. Everything that happens to her and around her becomes a video, but always framed as something that affected her because if it doesn't serve to make money, it's not a sad story. This is really hitting rock bottom, brothers. I'm so fascinated lately to see the sheer number of people who have been posting on social media regularly on people's accounts, but also on their own about how concerned they are that women over 40 who are single and don't have children are going to be in for a hell of a ride, that we have no idea what's waiting for us, that we are going to be miserable and lonely and they are so afraid for us. Now, I'm not talking about other women who are single and don't have children, who are expressing their own fears about how their future is gonna play out and asking other women in their shoes if they have the same fears. I'm talking about people who are married or couples who have children, who keep persistently posting this narrative that we're so worried about you all you women out there, you have no idea the life that you're choosing. You have no idea what's waiting for you. Now, I'm just going to skip over the part here where I tell you that I'm well over 40 and happier than I've ever been in my life because I have another point to make. I'm going to be generous here and even skip over the part where they're assuming that all of these things are choices that we have made. And sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't because that's the way life goes. They like to pretend that if you're a good person and if you're a wise person, you will just make a decision to get married and have children and it will happen for you successfully and happily no matter what, which we all know is not true. What I really want to know is why are they so obsessed with women who are single and don't have children? Why do they feel such a deep need to talk about us so regularly and to go to the point of searching out our social media pages to have interventions with us to make sure we understand we are on the wrong path? What are they so afraid of when it doesn't affect their life in any way? And more to the point, how do they come up with the time to do this? Don't they have spouses and children to look after? I'll tell you why. Because you've reached the wall and the wall doesn't forgive. Besides, you don't know how fun it is to watch videos from the wall of women hitting the wall. And another concern of men is that there are more expenses like children, more children born into the world. <laughs> now, joking aside, many women are attacked in these videos. The truth is, if it was their decision, and it's not an obsession, it's advice so that more women don't repeat their steps. Because if you don't like me talking about it, why do you also like spreading the idea that being single is the best? Because people don't want to hear that, especially men with sisters and daughters who don't want to see them at 40, alone, sad, and bitter with a cat. Our message is that the wall doesn't forgive to make women make the right decision to be with a partner in their youth, not to give away their dignity to chads, not to follow the corporate path, not to live on the carousel or belong to the streets, not to end up as single mothers. 
It's a simple but real message. So if bad decisions have consequences, making content also has consequences because they will all lead you to the wall because the wall doesn't forgive. Welcome to The Wall. Today, we will witness the divorce of a woman who calls herself Single Mother Lifestyles, showing how she married a beta provider solely for his resources, how she deceived him, and how she victimizes herself, claiming to be an example for her children. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you like what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. We would also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Your participation helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. It's kind of a long story. I'll try and see if I can fit it in 60 seconds. So we met in our early 20s. We got married at 27. And we did not have the connection and the chemistry that we should have, if that makes sense, in like the bedroom. And I married the nice guy and he married the hot girl. And uh, we were best friends, got along so well. We did not fight, we got along so well. But after 14 years together, 12 years married, that lack of chemistry and connection became a huge hole in our marriage. And we filled it with other people. <laughs> so it was just, our marriage had run its course and we had our kids together and that's awesome. And he's happily remarried and that's great. And I'm happy for him. Okay, so my divorce post is not rare. Yeah, so did I know before I got married? Of, of course I did. I was 27 when I got married. I was 26 when I got engaged. Do you think you know everything in your 20s? And everyone had told me my entire life, passion fades, passion fades, passion fades. So I took that as you didn't need it. If it fades, why do you even need it? Better off to marry the nice guy, right? I had dated all the douchebags in my 20s and had my heart broken. So I was like, I'm gonna go with the nice guy. And to be perfectly honest, He'd been a nerd in high school. He'd never gotten the pretty girls. And I think he married me because I was beautiful. I am beautiful, you know? And we were best friends, best friends. And that carried us along for a long time until it didn't. See what happens to the beta provider? Yes, because this man was a textbook beta provider. Surely he was chasing after this woman who isn't even that beautiful. She was about to hit the wall at 26 and you can see she was a hot woman. Just look at the intro, how she dances. She loved chads, men who bring nothing to the table except their seed. That's why she says she's dating all the idiots who broke her heart. In short, she's riding the carousel. None of those men wanted her. She settled for the nerd. Women like her shouldn't be saved. That's why a woman's past matters. This woman clearly had a high body count, but surely the simp was always chasing after her, as if there were no other women. She just settled for him because of his resources, what he brings to the table, because she didn't like him in bed. If she doesn't like it, be prepared for her to cheat on you like this woman did to this man. And I want you to notice something. She knew it since she was 26, she didn't like this man. But because she was nearing the wall, she chose him to have her children and resources, only for that reason. But she cheated on him with who? Surely with a Chad, with a man who drove her crazy in bed. Brothers, a woman's past matters. If she belongs to the streets, get out of there. Divorce is morally neutral. It's not a matter of morality. You can get divorced and still be a good person. It's morally neutral. Divorce is morally neutral. Don't stay for the kids. That's like one of the number one things I'm seeing in my comments. I'm staying for the children. I'm staying for the children. Part of the reason I left was because of the children. I get it. I get it. Thinking about having your children only half the time is nauseating, right? It makes you sick to your stomach to think about. But I didn't want to set the example for my children that lukewarm 
was what marriage looked like. And if you don't have a healthy marriage, your kids will know. And then they'll think that's what marriage is. And then they'll get into a marriage and think, well, this is like my parents. Would you tell your children to stay in a marriage that didn't fulfill them? Why do you? A few moments later. You can't make this shit up. You can't make up this shit. Look at the example. This woman gives him her children, cheats on their father, says she married without love for his money, admits she liked bad boys, and if her ex-husband wasn't good in bed. To top it off, she becomes a dancer after the divorce. But you are a great example of what the modern woman is like today. Your children will be proud. Even better, say all of this on video so there's no doubt about your decision. Because I always say, a woman is faithful to her emotions. If you put a woman on an emotional roller coaster, she'll give you everything. This man never treated her like she was ugly. He devalued himself, didn't put her through anguish, uncertainty, and instability. Women like this, especially those who've been with many chats, if you give her everything on a silver platter, she'll only see you as her puppet. That's why she cheated, because he didn't have the courage to dump her. That's why she left him, that's why she married him, because she was the man in the relationship. Brothers never date women accustomed to the bad life, they're not wife material. This man treated her like a queen, and she left him to go dancing in clubs, hanging out with chats. It gets even worse. Check out this woman's next video. Like what kind of stories do you want to know? To be perfectly honest, it's kind of slow in the poly world for me. I've had a friends with benefits sort of pop back in and I'll probably continue to engage there because he's fun and sweet and like, you know, there's no strings attached there. Uh, I know that my boyfriend has ended a relationship with somebody who he met around the similar time as me and things are sort of fizzled out and I know he's dating somebody new. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on. We have discussed our like polysaturation levels, like what is like the max out. And for both of us, it's like three, like three things. And then we'll probably like, that's as much as we can handle. He has more free time than I do. So mine honestly might be two. We'll see how it goes. This woman has a fire that not even the fire department can put out. She left her relationship and her husband to be in polyamorous relationships with chats. This woman belongs to the streets, but she wants to set an example for her children. A polyamorous relationship is when a woman can be with multiple partners. It's like her partner's permission to cheat. It usually doesn't end well, but if you're a chad who just wants to get laid, having women like this is heaven on earth. You just go and she'll comply. You don't have to give her anything else every single man's dream. Now this woman makes it clear that she only likes intimacy. She didn't look for another beta provider. She just wanted several chads. She just wanted to be used as a public toilet. You see her dancing on platforms for more men. That's why I say you have to check a woman's past. When she has a turbulent past, even if you treat her like a queen, she'll go back to what she was because Chad eats her brain, makes her love the bad life. Ladies, do not stay with him just because he's a nice guy. Your friends and family might not understand. What? He's such a nice guy. Yeah, he might be. But you also want to be with the guy who you want to have sex with as well. If you don't have that deep connection and that deep, deep intimacy, you'll feel alone. You'll feel alone. And I felt alone in my marriage for years. He also just did not understand my love language, which is physical touch. And I was starving, starving. And there's nothing, nothing lonelier than being alone in your marriage. Like literally being single, it's totally way easier than being alone in your marriage. I repeat it again with women. Intimacy is the most important thing. A woman can endure more if you're good in bed than if you treat her well and provide her with all the comforts. I'm sure many have seen women in super toxic relationships with men who treat them terribly, yet she stays with this man. He dumps her, cheats on her, 
mistreats her, and yet she still goes back to him. That's because she likes him in bed, because the man satisfies her well. That's why I say, a woman only seeks comfort when she's hitting the wall, but she always ends up cheating on that man or ending up in divorce. This woman is hot, she wanted an active man. This nerd, as she called him, inexperienced with women, was a textbook beta provider, didn't satisfy her as she wanted. She was crazy for the guy to pin her against the wall, for the man to be active. That's why, brother, remember, a woman is faithful to her emotions. The more emotions, both good and negative, you give to a woman, the more she clings to you because you make her invest all her attention in you. But let's see this model mother's new relationship. So the rules that I have with my boyfriend are pretty low-key and pretty simple. Um, obviously, safety first with everybody else um, is my number one rule. And then we've agreed that if we start dating somebody new, we'll like let the other one know. Um, especially if there's some sort of um, sexual contact involved. Um, we'll let the other one know about it. Um, and that's pretty it. That's pretty much it. We definitely don't have to share, like, I'm going on a date tomorrow or anything like that. Um, I sort of sometimes do, like, if, you know, we're just kind of talking about what's going on. I'm like, oh, I have a second date, you know, whatever uh, the case may be. He probably doesn't share as much, um, and that's just because this is his only second poly relationship, and the last one, I don't think they had any sort of, um, like, agreements at all. So, those are ours. Brothers, this guy is only there to satisfy her in bed. This man doesn't really have it that bad because he has her. He can have others. He's a classic Chad, spreading his seed everywhere. This woman is okay with him doing that as long as he's with her. You can't make the shit up. Why do you think single mothers have ruined the current times? They destroy marriages to belong to the streets. Because now it's all about empowerment. What's the first thing feminists tell you? You have power over your body which she interprets as you can sleep with as many as you want. Why do you think nobody takes a single mother seriously? Why do you think men only get involved with her for a night of passion? Because these women are hungry, especially when they come from a marriage where the man doesn't even touch them. This woman didn't even wait to get divorced before she was cheating while married. Just imagine how it was when she had freedom. Well, she can only see that she can't be with just one man. She has to be with several. I repeat, a woman's past does matter. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think of the life of this single mother? Would she be in a polyamorous relationship with someone? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.